I wanted to make this video because egoism, selfishness, pride, those behaviors have become very prevalent, actually almost admired and embraced, which is going to be a main part of this video. So now you probably want to know, what am I talking about? Because selfishness, egoism, it's all kind of vague. Instead of me explaining, I'll start with one example. This happened to me. So this person, they messaged me. So they're the one who started trying to talk to me. I never really messaged first because this person does have a history of doing this. But after a few days of them initiating contact with me first, I don't like to hold grudges. So I messaged them something first. And I didn't expect that instant reply because, you know, I have many friends that are busy but then almost seven hours go by until they respond out of curiosity i said how many hours do you spend on your phone and they sent me a screenshot of their screen time and it was 10 and a half hours on average so on some days easily 12 and that was really disrespectful so i said wow you spent that many hours on your phone and you responded to me in seven hours and they said almost proudly yeah i'm a busy person and I said, well, you're busy on your phone, obviously. Then they finished off with, I be watching YouTube. I didn't use that example to whine about my own experiences, but to show for you to kind of understand what I'm talking about. Not responding to a text isn't a big deal in itself, but what is, is disrespect, because I was very disrespected in this scenario. The common argument against this when you ask why they don't respond, many people will say, well, you're not entitled to my time. Well, what does that phrase really mean? Well, what it means is, you aren't entitled to my time. I'm entitled to your time. Why is that? Well, as much as friendship is a good thing, it's also a little bit of a burden. It takes a little bit of responsibility. In an ideal scenario, you'd have both people equally putting effort into the friendship. I don't remember in which video, but even Huberman said that you're going to have to go out of your way sometimes to have social interactions. But what these people want is someone to carry the entire friendship, to play by their flute, play by their rules. Because think about it like this, what if I did what that person did? So they responded seven hours, probably because they were watching YouTube, they were entertained, they didn't feel like it. So what if I also behaved like this person? They messaged me, oh, I had just such a bad thing happen to me, I want to talk about my experience. I don't respond because I don't feel like it. But then eventually I end up messaging them when it's convenient for me. And they don't respond because they don't feel like it in that moment. In that case, our interests are rarely going to line up and the friendship will fall apart because nobody wants to carry it and somebody has to. That's why the argument you aren't entitled to my time doesn't work because yeah, I'm not entitled to your time, but you aren't entitled to my time either. So then what happens? A similar thing can be said to if someone says you're clingy. In this regard, what it really means is that you're trying to make me carry part of the friendship and I don't like that. And I know people are busy. I'm pretty busy sometimes. But this person spends over 10 hours on their phone every day. I spend four and a half and you're not going to see me not respond to someone for more than two hours. I have another example that's also from my own experience. Me and this guy were playing a sandbox game. It was fun. It was in his interest, also in mine because it was entertaining. But then eventually we completed the goal that we wanted in that game and I stopped playing video games. And I knew this guy in real life for actually a very long time. I knew him at school, that sort of stuff. So I just started chatting with him normally, you know, just normal texting. But since I stopped playing video games, he lost interest in talking to me completely. And after a while, I told him how I felt and I stopped talking to him. So then after a long time, he ended up messaging one of the friends that I still talk to. So then my friend asked the guy, hey, why'd you stop replying to Ruslan? And here's the intriguing part. He said, I was busy with friends and games. And I shouldn't have to say, but it's an awful thing you say to anybody. In much like the I be watching YouTube example and this one, they find what they did justifiable and they're actually very proud of it. Like I bet there's some scenario out there if you go on r slash am I right or am I wrong. Someone could say, I work at a store that offers a discount to family members. I gave the discount to everyone, including my brother. Recently, my brother also started working at a store that also offers a family discount. When I asked if he could give me his discount, he said no. I could be wrong but then many people would say you know you aren't entitled to your brother's discount he doesn't have to give it to you and sure to some extent they might be right but the issue is that if you know no one's entitled to his discount he's still doing something wrong right in this example let's say it doesn't cost him anything to give him the discount he can just give it there's nothing stopping him and he just simply doesn't want to that is the wrong thing to do i know kindness is when you shouldn't expect anything back for this example it would be if you're giving someone a discount you shouldn't expect them to give you one too but even though it makes you a good person to not expect anything back it doesn't mean that the other person isn't a bad person for not giving anything back. And that's what so many people get wrong. Like they would easily think, well, the brother 
who doesn't want to give the discount he's in the right you know they'd support him of course i could be wrong because this is a made-up example but the way things are going it doesn't seem too far off lots of people even brag about being an egoist and i'll admit i'm guilty of doing that at some point in my life too on that topic you might have seen this relatively old somewhat funny trend some people were just joking about it but others took it seriously it goes like this if you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best and for those that were saying that unironically, it's just another example of people embracing their flaws. And there's quite a few trends like that. And for those, I think it's a very small percent of people that do that stuff unironically. But, you know, just another thing to point out. But let's move on to a different topic. As much as uh, we, including me, like to point our fingers at someone and say, Oh, you're an egoist, you're a narcissist. Starts with looking at yourselves. And if every true egoist actually took a really good look at themselves, most of them will probably change how they behave. So here's some signs of narcissism. But I'd like to say, even though the title says, says narcissism and up till now i might have even used the word quite a bit none of this is technically narcissism as far as i'm aware it's close but it's not the actual definition of it the reason why i'm using it is like let's say i made the title the rise of egoism many wouldn't take it seriously because it's kind of lost its meaning egoist some people think of it as a good thing you know many people say like i mentioned prior oh i'm such an egoist right so it doesn't really get the point across that i'm trying to say so i will be using narcissism instead okay signs of narcissism First, saying I or me a lot. Like, for example, someone says, hey, why didn't you respond? I had something happen or something happened to me. Next is trying to make a situation about themselves. Like someone says, you're not responding to me for weeks. You know, it made me really sad that you ditched me. And they'll say, oh, you won't believe what I was going through. I was having such a tough time that something was happening to me. Next is disrespect. It's a given. Like communicating to people like an on and off switch you want to talk to them you turn that switch on and you start communicating to them probably talking about yourself a lot but then you get bored you don't want to talk you know it's like putting a game on pause you turn off that imaginary switch they can scream they can bawl their eyes out you're not interested they're only thinking about their enjoyment maybe they're getting entertainment out of it or maybe they're letting off some steam they're venting to you and here's the last sign you've probably already noticed it through all the examples i showed they aren't ashamed and they're proud of what they do. Because many people close to my age group, like teenagers, for many, you're more popular or more cool, the more busy and distant you seem. You especially notice this on Snapchat, where people can just not respond to each other for days or weeks. It's pretty much a contest of who cares less. So if people pretend to be busy, it gives them an ego boost. If you look at my first example, this is actually exactly what happened. They said, I'm a busy person. Well, they probably aren't as busy as they say because they spend over 10 hours on their phone, but they still told me they are, and that probably reinforced the image of themselves they have in their head and probably made them happy. In short, people are trying to be like celebrities. If you're a celebrity, you can't respond to many people, you're always busy, you're distant, right? No one can just message PewDiePie, and many wanna be like that. Now, moving on, why is this happening? I wouldn't know if it's very recent, because I wasn't even around in the 90s. But no matter if it's a new thing or not, it's still bad. But it probably is more recent as technology progresses. Because with the internet, you have a lot more power. No one can block in real life. It's harder to ignore someone in real life. And in real life, people can actually harm you. Online, you see so many people just swearing at each other. But nobody's going to come up to a huge dude and start insulting him. So there's more responsibility and less control. But online altercations, but online altercations give you the complete opposite. You can do whatever you want. You can block someone. You can mute someone. Not reply to them for weeks. You can do whatever you want. Next, it's that times are easier. Today, there's more comfort and there's less discomfort. It's like the saying, bad times make strong men. Strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men make bad times. And as much as that phrase is overused, it's also very true. And it doesn't just apply to men. So I'd like to bring up a mini point. Because I know there are many nice women. But in the US, this egoism issue plagues more women than men. And that's because how women are treated. I know there's lots of countries where men have more power. But in the United States, it's the opposite. Women are taught from the get-go that they are above men. There's even many studies that show that teachers give higher grades to female students. And from my experience of school, I remember many of these things to be true. And in many different aspects of life, like divorces, women are given more power here. And when someone gets power, they often abuse it. Just like the online example, people are on their phones, they have more control, they abuse it. But in the United States, women have more control, so they abuse it. I'm not saying it's just women that struggle with their egos. It's actually more closely split than you might think. Maybe 60, 65% women and 40, 35% men. So it's relatively evenly split. But next, how do you deal with a narcissist? Well, if you really want them to reply to you, 
You can use the common advice of replying slower. It sounds like it doesn't work, but it pretty much always works to some extent. Because this sort of self-centered behavior is usually caused by a lack of willpower. They can't control themselves. They just prioritize themselves first because they feel like it. And they don't have the strength to fight that urge. So you can abuse a common human instinct. We humans, when something is more scarce, we assume it must be more valuable. Vice versa, if something is more abundant, then it must be less in value. So when you reply to them fast, they don't feel like replying as much because you've become lower in value for them. But if you reply slower and make yourself more scarce, you've just gone up in value. And that might be the reason why many people don't reply in the first place, to try to make themselves seem higher in value. But look, now you reply to them slower and you've just gone up in value for them and they feel like replying to you more and they don't have the willpower to fight that urge or maybe they're not even aware that they want to reply faster. But you shouldn't do this. The best thing you can do for both you and them is just stop talking to them. Completely stop replying to them. Maybe give them a second chance eventually, maybe even a third chance. Everyone can change, but at some point you just have to give it up because that change might take a really long time. And the best thing you can do to help them change is to not reinforce their toxic behavior. Because there's one last reason why this sort of behavior has become more prevalent through the internet. It's because many people have a lot more options they can ditch you, they can throw you around, then they'll just find new people to talk to, it doesn't really matter. If you don't accept their one-sided relationship criteria, if you don't play by their flute, then they'll probably find someone who will. But if everyone around the entire world all at once stop talking to these people, then they'd have to change, they'd have to look at themselves. And I don't wish any ill will to the people in this video that I've been referring to as narcissists or egoists because we all have issues, we all make mistakes. So maybe when you aren't in a good place mentally, you close yourself off from people or you do some of those other toxic behaviors for different reasons, but you know it's the wrong thing to do and try to change, then that's great because one of the biggest reasons I wanted to make this video is for everyone to know that that type of behavior is an issue because so many people make it seem like that isn't an issue. People ditch each other, ghost each other, throw each other around, disrespect each other, and it make it seem like those people didn't do anything that was wrong. And that's really all that I wanted to say, so have a good day. Bye.